Well, good afternoon. Glad you've joined us for our midweek Bible study as we get, get into the scriptures again and just connect. I'm certainly glad for the opportunity to uh, see folks in the middle of the week again. That's been a blessing. And uh, if you're watching this, I trust this will be a continued encouragement to our hearts, at least in a devotional way, as we connect uh, about the Word of God. So let's begin with a word of prayer and look at our study for tonight. Father, thank you again uh, for the chance we have to uh, just get together again in this way and to look into your Word. Pray, Lord, that you'd encourage us in it. Lord, teach us what you have to say, as always. And uh, Lord, maybe more so what you have to, uh, what we'd hear from you. Uh, Lord, help us to consider uh, our nearness to you, Lord, and the privilege of doing so, of having that relationship. In your name we pray it. Amen. Well, I'd like tonight to uh, talk with you about a, a devotional entitled uh, Out With God. Out With God. And uh, years ago, uh, there was a, this was a term used uh, for a couple that was declaring themselves to be a couple. Uh, they were said to be out with one another. And uh, that set the stage for w what would come together. Uh, it was a beautiful way of expressing their uh, interest in one another and their enjoyment of one another. And in a spiritual sense, I'd like us to look together at our being out with God, uh, that we declare ourselves, uh, not necessarily before other men, but declare ourselves before the Lord that we are out with Him. And, uh, and certainly that's uh, the thought we have in the Scripture. I'm starting tonight uh, in, in the thought of walking with God in the book of Genesis, chapter 5 and verse 24. Genesis 5 and verse 24, we find this twice here, interestingly enough, in the Old Testament. It says in 524 that Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. It's a good way of saying Enoch was out with God his entire life, all of his days until the day that he actually was out with God at home. God took him up. That was kind of neat. And then Enoch's grandson, Noah, uh, we, read, we read that again concerning him in chapter 6. Uh, Noah was a just man. This is chapter 6 and verse 9. Noah was a just man. And, uh, and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. Now, we live in a culture where it's not very popular or common to, 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 to think that we would be declaring ourselves as those that walk with God. While we would do that, it's not a popular thought today. I thought of how countercultural that was for Noah in his day. Because we know, apart from he and his family, there were none others that were out with God. And we read about it with his grandfather. And uh, being a grandfather myself, I, I must ask the question and entertain it. Is the fact that I do or don't walk with God today, is it going to make an impact on my children and their children? Well, I think it's obvious here. Scripture gives us the record that Enoch walked with God and his grandson, Noah, Methuselah's son, he walked with God as well. In a day when others walked out on God, even others that would have been Jews, uh, Hebrews, uh, in, in the sense of being a part of Noah's family or the family of Seth uh, through uh, Adam, but the point is, I'm saying even the, the godly people of the day uh, weren't doing it. They weren't fearing God. They weren't following God as they should. But Noah did. And the encouragement to my heart, and I trust ours tonight, is that although others may not walk with God, other Christians we know may not walk with God, the question is really, am I walking with God? Does God see me as one who walks with him? It wasn't Noah who declared this about himself. It was God who declared of Noah. He was a just man, a perfect or righteous, and he walked with God. And I trust that's an encouragement to our hearts as we look at this. 
because we may live in a, a place where there's not a lot of people around us that would say, hey, we walk with God. Matter of fact, maybe the whole world seems to be going the other way. And we're, again, countercultural. We're, we're walking against the tide. We're not going with the flow today because we also want to be counted as men and women who walk with God. Walk with God. Well, there's certainly many ways we could go in this study, but I, I thought of some things that we should uh, look at and, and uh, as we, we look at it here. Uh, what, what does it mean to be involved in a, a life where we're walking with God, to be, to be telling God or telling ourselves, no, I'm a, a man or maybe you're a woman who, who is walking with God? Uh, and, and so let's explore that a little bit as we talk about it. Uh, the first thing I, I, I have to look at here with you is that it's an agreement between two parties. It's an agreement between two parties. And my mind's going up on the same thing that we began with, this matter of courtship, where a couple is out with one another, where they're declaring themselves a couple. Uh, in what ways am I declaring myself to be out with God, to be a God lover, a God follower, to be out with God. How am I doing that? How are you doing that? The first thing is this. I think it involves an agreement between two parties. An agreement between two parties. Here, it was Enoch and God, and it was Noah and God. And for you and I, it would be us and the Lord as well. Uh, I wrote this down. God has chosen to walk with us. The question really comes down, am I choosing to walk with God? This is going through my mind in the scripture reading we had from the pulpit back a week back. And uh, Psalm 4.3, but know, the, know this, know that the Lord has set apart for himself him who is godly. If a man or a woman will live a godly life, God says, I am setting that person apart for myself. I like that. Because it's not only then my choice to want to live godly, but it's saying if I do so, then God reciprocates that by setting us apart for himself. And again, coming to the language of a husband and a wife or a bride and a bridegroom, uh, they set themselves apart for one for one another. We know in, in the book of Joshua, we find uh, that Joshua told the people to sanctify themselves. Sanctify themselves. Because God will be amongst them the next day. Uh, we, we think back in our younger days, maybe, uh, at, uh, uh, having a date of sorts. Uh, we might find ourselves, ladies, uh, getting themselves all ready for the, for the special date that night. Oh, in what ways am I getting myself ready each day to walk with the Master? To walk with the lover of my soul? How am I beautifying myself? How am I preparing myself spiritually for that person? I think we can agree that uh, this involves, uh, this matter of walking with God, it involves agreement between two parties. While God is always ready and willing to walk with us, Really, it comes down to the question, are we willing to reciprocate that? Uh, we just came through Valentine's season, and, and we think of that verse. We talked about it on Sunday. We love God because he first loved us. It isn't a question of whether or not God's willing to walk with us. The question really comes down to the fact that, am I willing to be a man, or are you willing to be a woman who will choose to walk with God? Out with God. Am I willing to do that? I think that's an important thing for us. At the end of Joshua's life in chapter 24, 15, he said this, Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. He's talking about the other gods, or will you choose the one and only God? And he says at the end of that verse, But as for me and my wife, my kids, my house, we will serve the Lord. So I think as we look at this, it involves a choice on our part that we are we willing to choose to be out with God? To be in step with God, not out of step with God, but maybe out of step with the world, but in step with God. It's an agreement between two parties. 
Here's another thought. It's an agreement with, with a purpose. It's an agreement as to its purpose. And the purpose in this agreement of walking with God is unity or oneness. That's so true in marriage. A marriage is only as strong as the couple are, are single in their mindset or their purpose. If he wants to go one way and she plans to go another, then indeed uh, we know that this is not what God will have us to do. And uh, we, we, we come here and find this oneness of purpose is really that which characterizes the people of God. It characterizes the people of God. And we find ourselves, as we look at this, uh, asking, am I of one mind with God? Am I looking to uh, follow God in, in his ways? And that's how the Old Testament scriptures often put it. What does it look like to be in step with God and in the same mind with God or to walk in the same direction? And here we find it very clearly here shown to us uh, in, in uh, Psalm 86, 11, uh, Teach me a way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. To walk with God isn't necessarily holding his hand and walking in step with him, although that's coming up next in our study. But it really has the idea of being the same purpose. We're going in the same direction. We have the same mindset. It said in Amos chapter 3, verse 3, Amos asked the question, Can two walk together unless they are agreed? And I suggest to our hearts here today that when you and I or when I agree with God, when you agree with God, then it is that we can walk with Him. I can't walk with God any more than praying in the will of God while I'm insisting on my own will. When I walk with God, I leave my own will aside and I walk in His way. I walk in His steps. I walk according to His commandments. Psalm 86, 11, Unite my heart to fear your name. I like that. Unite my heart. Lord, may my desires be your desires. May your direction be my direction. May your will for my life be my will for my life. In other words, it's an attitude of submission to the Lord. Sometimes my wife, my wife and I will walk, and if you're taking hands and you're not keeping in step, that can get troublesome. Spiritually speaking, I want to keep in step with God. I'm getting ahead of myself, but... Uh, we want to have a oneness and purpose. I say that because I'm leading into the next thought, and that's this. If we're going to walk with God, it indicates an agreement in our pace, in our pace. And I think we struggle with that as God's people, especially when we have things in life that we're praying about. Maybe it's health, maybe it's relationships, maybe it's resolving a situation or just asking God to to get involved or save, to save a friend or even to come again, Lord Jesus. It's walking at the same pace God is going on. Jesus said it this way, didn't he, Matthew? Take my yoke upon you. It's easy. We're not like a puppy straining on the chain. When we put that yoke on, it indicates that we're walking in unity with the Lord. We're walking in harmony with him. When he steps, we step. When he says go, we go. Just like the Old Testament with the Israelites following the cloud of God's glory. When it moved, they moved. When it stood still, they stood still. And don't we have trouble with that? I think in the picture of walking a dog, we would, meaning no disregard in it, but we would find ourselves often pulling at God to make him come in our direction. And he's not going to do that. He's not going to do that. Um... I love Isaiah uh, chapter 40, verse 31. Learned it when we first went to church. We used to sing it. And uh, the verses, you, you're familiar with it, no doubt. Uh, Those that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run with God and not grow weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Friend, when we walk in step, in pace with God, an agreement in our pace. We resolve to walk as he walks. When he says go, we go. When he says no, we stay. When he says walk, we walk. 
If he says run, we can run. We don't want to get ahead of God. We don't want to lag behind and fall out of step or fall out of the way. If we as men and women of God are going to walk with God, it means we'll walk in harmony in that way. We'll take his yoke upon us. As even the son said to the father, not my will, but thy will be done. And Christian, that, that's what we need to be committed to. A man or a woman who walks with God will resolve to walk with God, His way, according to His will. According to His will. Well, not only is it is an agreement to walk at the same pace as He walks, to, but to be out with God suggests that, that there's an agreement involving a price. An agreement involving a price. Now let's reflect again, if I can liken this to the uh, relationship between a man and a woman. Back in ancient days, the biblical times, we know that a, a, a man, uh, his family paid a dowry in order to get the settlement or the arrangement for appointment for a wife or him. So, so the man's family paid a dowry. Usually her dad uh, uh, named the price and uh, the, uh, the groom's son, uh, father, paid that price, a dowry. Uh, today it's a little different, uh, but not so, uh, because in most situations a man uh, agrees or uh, engages himself to a woman and in that engagement he, he provides a gift most often times. Not always, but most often times, and that gift is usually in the form of an engagement gift or an engagement ring. There's a price attached to it. So Christian, I ask you the, the question, what price is attached to our relationship to the Lord Jesus? What price is attached to it? I, I think we could look at it in many ways. The first one is this, this, this bride has been purchased with the blood out of his own side, haven't we? Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, we have been bought with a price. Who paid the price? The Lord Jesus paid it. What was it? The precious blood of Christ. He paid for us, not with shekels of silver and gold, Peter says, but with his own precious blood. So right away we can see as God's people, there's been a great price that he's paid for us. I think not only that, but when we get saved, I find another gift that God gives in this, in order to secure, uh, solidify this relationship. It's in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. When we're saved, when we, it says, for those who trust and believe, that those who trust and believe are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. It says in that chapter also that the, this giving of the Spirit is the earnest of our salvation. In other words, it's the down payment. Uh, the giving of the Holy Spirit is the engagement ring, the promise of a future uniting between us and God in heaven. What a wonderful thought the scripture gives us there. But I thought about in one more aspect. God's paid much. He's provided much price-wise to secure a relationship with me, with you. Now the question is this, in order to walk with God, is there a price that you and I must be willing to pay? Is there a price that you're willing to pay and that you are paying that you might walk with God, that you might be out with him? That's a good question. It's a good point. Is it to be said that all Christians know the secret like we have here in the book of Genesis, of walking with God? No. I would say it's a rare blessing. It's a rare privilege. While every Christian is given the opportunity to walk with God, most don't. Most won't. Why? Because it comes down to this point. While they want Christ beside them, or they want to have the, foot, the footprint poem experience in life, they're not willing to invest in that relationship. And if I, like, like Enoch and Noah, if you and I are to walk with God, it's going to cost us something. It's going to cost us something. The first thing is this. It's going to cost us not to be selfish. 
We can't be selfish in our spirit, selfish in our spiritual hearts and minds, and at the same time, walk on with the Lord. We can't do that. We can't do that. Many Christians are too absorbed in, 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 in themselves. Uh, put that in a, a dating relationship for a young couple or even a marriage relationship. If one in, the, if one in the party is only interested in satisfying themselves and pleasing themselves, uh, what does that do? It starves the marriage relationship. It's true spiritually. We can put many applications to that in the scripture. The thought of giving up everything to follow Jesus? It's just too high. Daily Bible reading? Studying? Coming to church every week? No, 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 no. Giving my money? No, you know, I work hard for that money. I, no, I don't think so. My time? No, no, no. I'm not. No, no. Invest time at church? Yeah, I'm way too busy. You see, if we're going to walk with God, it's going to cost the Christian something. Look at the parable with me, if you would, in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew 13. Jesus tells a parable, and I, I enjoy it because the teaching is so real, near to our hearts. Here are the parables of the Lord as he gives them in the, in the book of Matthew. Some 30 parables Jesus tells. But um, here in Matthew 13, uh, Jesus tells about one man. One man. And, uh, and he found a secret. And for you and I, we have found the secret of a relationship with Christ. And it's really sad when you find out that that relationship is given to you or open to you or me, and we don't take advantage of it. We don't pay attention to it. I'm mean, here in, Luke, in uh, Matthew 13, and in verse 46, Jesus said this, The kingdom of heaven is like a businessman, a merchant man, seeking good, good pearls, who, when he found one pearl of great price, he's seeking pearls, but he finds one pearl above all others, it's worth a lot. It's worth a great price. What did he do when he found that one? It says he went, it's, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. He went and sold all that he had and bought it. It's similar to the parable just before that of the hidden treasure in verse 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure treasure hidden in a field. And when a man has found it, he hides it, and for the joy thereof, he goes and sells all he has again and what? And he buys that field. If you and I really believe that having a relationship, a personal fellowship relationship with God, intimate relationship with God every day, is the greatest riches in all the world, then it will cost us something. It'll cost us everything. We find that so many times in Jesus' teaching. It's going to cost us everything. He, the man sold all that he had to buy it. Now applying that to our study, what does that look like? It means we sell everything. Paul said it this way to Philippians. He said, whether it's fame or fortune, reputation, he says, I count that all but dung that I might walk with Christ, that I might win Christ. I want his approval. I want his nearness. And folks, that's what we get to understand. That's sacrifice. We don't get into that too much today. These thoughts of submission to God and his will and sacrifice of all that we might keep for the relationship with God. Oh, is it a pearl of great price to you to be with God and part of his kingdom to me? Oh, indeed it is. Indeed it is. Jesus told the rich young ruler that came to him uh, that, that his problem in life, he wanted eternal life. He, his problem was that he wasn't following God or nor willing to. And he, the Lord Jesus spoke these words to him in Luke 18, 22. Sell all that you have, give it to the poor, and then you'll have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. I can fake following Jesus on the outside. But if I'm going to 
be out with Christ alone, if I'm going to walk with him day and night through the bright days and the dark days, it's going to require a willingness to pay the price. I thought of the Beatitudes Jesus teaches. And in the Beatitudes, we know as we look at them in the Scripture, Jesus spoke about it. Those who are going to walk with him, those who are going to be claimed to be Christians, they're going to have to be willing to pay a price to be poor in spirit, to be meek, lowly, uh, to be to sorrow, mourn, to be hunger, willing to hunger, willing to be uh, persecuted for the sake of the gospel. Are we willing to pay that kind of price in the world we're living with in order to be the men and women that God sets apart for himself? Well, I must add one more to it after our study, and we're not finished with it yet this week in our dwell reading. Uh, and I've really enjoyed that. This business of walking with God must mean there's an agreement as to a place. Or maybe places. We've been reading on the fact of God's meeting with us every day. That's like walking with God. Same thought, isn't it? And it's talked about having a meeting place. A place where we get along with God. A place where we talk with Him. A place where we enjoy Him place where we can be alone. Maybe it's a special place in your home. Maybe it's in your car. Maybe it's a place you like to walk. Maybe it's why you're doing exercise. It's a, it's a place where you feel you're getting away from it all. I called it in my notes here. It's that secret place. It doesn't mean it's not on Main Street. It just means it's a, a special place. A secret place. It's really sacred because you meet God there. It's how you walk with him. It's where you enjoy your time with him. Hard for a mother with the kids around the ankle to get that kind of time. Maybe it's when the kids have gone all to bed. Maybe it's after you've gone all to pieces for the day. Mom, well, wherever it is, it's that place that we maintain in our busy lives as being that special place, that special time where you enjoy being in God's fellowship. We get busy, we lose that. Took last week off, Teresa and I had the day away just to, to be together. And uh, I get busy and I neglect that sometimes. And she's good at telling me we need to take a day and take some time. And it's always good to do that. It, it's taking that time to cultivate the relationship we already have. And that's what God wants us to do. It involves a lot of different things, but one thing for sure, God desires that we would have a special place with him in our lives, each and every day. Micah 6, 8 asks this question, what does the Lord require of you, Israel? But to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. Might we walk humbly with God this week? Why you walk close with him? Take time to talk to him. Think about him. Pray. Maybe put on some nice music to direct your heart and mind that way. But consider it a mini vacation. And you're getting away with him. What a great, great time we could have each day if we avail ourselves to the sanctuary where we meet with God. Trust you will and trust that's an encouragement to your faith as it really has been to mine. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Father, thank you again for meeting with us today. Lord, we take time for things like this. Lord, it just it just draws us near to you. And Lord, pray that we might walk in your ways according to your commands, that we might walk with you more closely. In your name we pray it. Amen. God bless.